Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to resolve the how initialization failed error you might be getting that results in a stop blue screen of death on Windows 10. You'll get a blue screen of death that will basically just say that your PC is run into an error or a problem and needs to restart. We're just collecting some information and we'll restart it for you. And just like with most blue screen of death, um, there could be a lot of issues that could cause this error. Specifically, adding a new driver or service could definitely be likely causes. So we're going to go through a couple of measures to hopefully resolve these issues for you guys. And we're going to start by heading over to the start button and right click on it. And then you want to left click on the selection that says command prompt admin right here. If you receive a user account control window, select yes. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is type in BC D E D I T. So BCD edit space forward slash set another space. And now this is all going to be one word here. Use platform clock another space. And then you want to type trill. And then once you're done typing this in exactly as it appears on my screen, you want to hit enter on your keyboard. Okay, so once you're done doing that, you can close out of the command line window. And now you want to head over to the start button and you want to left click on it. Then you want to type in disk cleanup. And then left click on disk cleanup here. Now you want to select everything on the side here, so anything that's unchecked, you want to check it. And then left click on the button that says clean up system files. Do not click on OK. You want to left click on this button here that says clean up system files. Okay, so again, um, select everything. Please note if you have any previous Windows installations, you do not have to uncheck that. Um, just keep that in mind. Because then you would not be able to restore back to a previous version of Windows. And this only applies to people who upgraded to Windows 10 and did not come pre-installed with it. And then you want to left click on OK again. Make sure you want to permanently delete the files. Select delete files. Please keep in mind you do not have to select um, to delete previous versions of Windows. Um, I'm going to select yes in my case, but you do not have to select yes. I'm just going to select it because I don't really need it for the purpose of this review. So just keep that in mind because that's where some people could get into trouble. You do not have to, again, remove any files pertaining to your upgrade to Windows 10. So at this point we want to head over to our web browser. You can pick any web browser you want. I'm going to open up Google here and I'm going to type in CCleaner. The website should say www.pureform.com and it should say CCleaner free download. Make sure you're not downloading an advertisement, even though in this case it appears the advertisement is for the correct domain. Um, I'm going to select the free download option right here which really won't give us the free download right away but it'll take us to the page to get the free download um, please note as of the recording um, the free download it's on the far left side it might change depending on later updates to the website but make sure you download the free version it's completely free so I'm going to click on the little download button here 
so the download has started. If it doesn't start for you, you can left click on the start the download button right here. So once it's finished downloading, left click on run. You receive a user account control window, select yes. Under C Cleaner uh, setup, you want to left click on the customize button right here. You can select any options you want to deselect. So if you wanted to not create a desktop shortcut or start menu shortcut, you can change that. However, it um, doesn't really matter. You can uninstall this program once we are done with this tutorial if you chose to do so. Um, I'm going to keep everything default for the purpose of this review. And then I'm going to left click on install. If you do not have Google Chrome installed, it might ask you if you want to install Google Chrome. It's not required to use this program, so you can unselect it in the previous window we were on. So I'm going to uncheck the box next to View Release Notes, and I'm just going to just left click on Run CCleaner. I'm going to left click on the Registry button on the left side here. And then I'm going to left click on the Scan for Issues button. And then I'm going to left click on Fix Selected Issues. So do you want to back up changes to the registry? Select Yes. Now I would recommend saving it to the desktop or you can save it really anywhere and you can call it whatever you want. Um, if you want to give it a date, that'd be acceptable as well. Yeah, the date on this computer is just really off. Um, if anybody was wondering, this is definitely not October 5th. Anyway, so once we left click on Fix Selected Issues, we can left click on this button that will fix all selected issues so you don't have to go one at a time. So left click on this middle button here, and all the issues were fixed. And if for some reason we ever had an issue and we had to restore back the registry if something went wrong, if you double click on this file, it'll give you an option to restore the registry back. So let's say we left click on Yes. We are not going to proceed with that, but just if you guys had an issue, you could left click on yes, and that would restore the registry back. And I do not believe you need CCleaner installed in order to do so. Another thing I would recommend doing is seeing if you have any Windows updates. So while I'm actually not going to run a full Windows update installation, because that's going to take a while, I'm just going to show you guys where to get to it. So if you left click on the Start button, and then you left click on Settings, on the settings window here, you would navigate over to the update and security tile. And then you left click on check for updates. But since I'm not going to sit through all these updates, um, I'll leave that to you guys. If you guys are still having this error, um, do not fear. We have another thing we can check out. And that will be to head back to the start menu. And we're going to type in device manager. And it should be listed directly above the control panel. So what we want to do is left click on that. And now specifically we're going to be going underneath the display adapters here. And we're going to left click on the little drop down next to that. Whatever display adapter is listed here, you want to right click on it. And then left click on update driver software. And then how do you want to search for the driver software? I'd recommend searching automatically first. And if all else fails, you could download the driver software offline. Um, I already believe I made a tutorial about how to update driver software, specifically how to update your display adapter, which is pretty much the same for any one of these um, devices that you might have on your computer. It's virtually the same process. So I'm not going to spend that much time on this part of the video. But anyway, you would try to search automatically first. That would be the first option I would at least try because it requires the least amount of effort. Okay. So we can see that the best driver software is already installed. You might have an option to install a newer version of the driver. So just keep that in mind. Just go along with the prompts on the screen. And then again, I would recommend restarting your computer after you try every one of these methods. It doesn't really do any harm to do so. So now, um, if that failed, well, we have another thing we can try. And that would be to head over to the Start menu, and we're actually going to right-click on the Start button. And then we're going to head up to Command Prompt Admin. Select Yes if you get a user account control window again. 
same as before and now we're going to run a check disk scan so if you guys are not familiar we're going to just walk through this here we're going to start by typing a C H K D S K space forward slash F another space forward slash R another space C and then you can do a colon so uppercase C, um, I would recommend doing uppercase C, lowercase everything else and then hit enter on your keyboard so what this is going to do is it's going to begin running a check disk scan so in most cases you're going to have to restart um, when your computer is running in normal Windows operating mode which makes sense if you think about it so in order to initiate this we're just going to type Y on our keyboard and then hit enter so now we see that our volume C is going to be checked when we restart our computer so at this point we can actually close out of our command prompt and restart the computer so if you want to restart the computer most of you guys should know how to do that but head over to the start button left click on power and then left click on restart please make sure you close out all your applications before you restart your computer here So actually I'm going to cancel this scan because I do not want to sit through this process but I would recommend letting this continue to scan if I were you guys. Um, just this process will take a while and there's a couple more um, options I want to get through in order to resolve your guys issues. But you guys get to just let that scan just keep running. Um, I just canceled it and then you guys were wondering I just tapped the key on my keyboard just to get around that and I'm gonna get back into Windows here and I'm gonna do uh, one or two more suggestions that I could offer to you guys on how to resolve this issue so rather than pausing the video I think I'm just going to sit through this one with you guys or let you guys sit through with me it's more appropriate so I'm just going to log back into Windows here Okay, so now if that failed, I think we're on to method number seven here, or something like that. So we're going to head over to the start button and we're going to left click on it. And then we are going to type in PowerShell. Should be listed as Windows PowerShell, a desktop app. You want to right click on it. And then left click on run as administrator. Again, user account control window, select yes. Now we want to do is once our PowerShell window is open, you want to type in SFC, all lowercase, space, forward slash, scan, now, and then hit enter on your keyboard. This will take a while because it's going to have to verify um, the phases of your system scan. It will take a while to run but it will also be able to repair corrupted system files so like I said before it's beginning the verification phase and this will take quite a while to run so keep that in mind let this scan run and then I believe you'll be prompted to restart your computer if that method fails um, I would only suggest a couple more options at this point if this method does not work I would suggest running a Windows memory diagnostic scan Again, I have a tutorial on my channel about that as well. And if that failed, I would recommend not only trying to uninstall programs you might have recently installed on your computer that could be causing this. So if you just recently installed an application and now you're experiencing this error, 
I would suggest that there is some suspicion in there. So definitely consider that. And then as a last resort, I would recommend running a system restore or perhaps just reinstalling Windows if it was that bad. Now, I'm not going to show all of this in this one video. I think I've probably already kind of overkilled it, but I just wanted to give you guys a variety of options to do. Um, so I think that will pretty much cover most of the different solutions I can offer to you guys in this brief tutorial, and I will catch you in the next video. Goodbye.